Apollo Crews versus Carmelo Hayes, two out of three falls. This was some BS right here. So the way what? this... Oh, yeah. The way this was booked, they had no chance of having a great match. But they went out there and they tried. And the actual, like, as far as displays of athleticism, this was, this was as good as anything else in the show. Mm-hmm. Apollo Crews is amazing. Carmelo Hayes is amazing. They had great chemistry. And the rest of they did was great, great, great stuff. I did laugh. I did literally laugh. There's a point where... Vic asks Booker, of course, the wrestling veteran, how grueling is this kind of two out of three falls matchup? Well, you know, Carmelo, Carmelo Hayes and Apollo Crews, this is the main event anywhere in the world. These guys really are that good, but I'm sorry, what was your question again? <laughs> I laughed my ass off of that. So the match is a lot of fun. Uh, Carmelo snaps Apollo's he- uh, neck on the ropes for, for uh, the heat. It was funny. Trick actually tried to interfere, and that didn't work, and so Carmelo just got the heat clean. So, all right, whatever. But he's working him over, and... I say this like this is, is pleasantly. This is, this is a compliment. They slowed things way down because most NXT matches go as fast as they can all the time, start to finish. And once Carmelo got the heat, the other match had room to breathe. I'm like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna do something here. And then he works over Cruz for a while, and Cruz starts to make his comeback, and immediately Hayes puts him in a crossface, and Cruz taps, like immediately, like, all right. Let's and it was, it, I don't know for sure, but I think that. Uh, I think this was a botch, not the not the tap out, but they did a a, a very very complicated tilt a whirl, and I think he was supposed to land in the cross face, uh-huh. but he spun so many times, and Apollo's like with such power was spinning him around for this tilt a whirl, yes, that he landed on the wrong side. Gotcha. And so he wasn't in position to do the cross face, and so he rolled him over, covered him. Did one more move and then put him in the cross face and submitted him. So I think they were supposed to do the tilt a whirl into the cross face for the submission, which would have gotcha. been awesome. Gotcha. But uh, it still worked out. And when it happened, I was like, what? He submitted him clean? And so I went back, which, by the way, with uh, an upload speed of 10 megabits, it took like five minutes to just go back 30 seconds. But uh, I went back and sure as shit, there was like no, nothing. They were just wrestling, and then he cleanly submitted him in the middle of the ring. I was like, wow. Well, let's see what they do in the second fall. So what they did in the second fall was they had a fun match. It's going back and forth. They do a double down. Uh, Trick exposes the turnbuckle, then runs around the ring to essentially shout at Carmelo Hayes, I have exposed a turnbuckle behind you. There's bare metal. And... Carmelo looks at the medal and smiles and looks back at Trick and gives him a thumbs up. The world's dumbest referee did not notice this. <laughs> now, it didn't matter because Carmelo was the one who ended up going into the steel anyway. So Trick ties to interfere again, but a large man shows up. I believe his name is Domicato. Domicato. Domicato? Daba Kato. Domicato. Yes. He was in the pit fights or whatever. Yeah, this, was, this, this, this is uh, Commander Aziz. I see. It was his original name before he was Commander Aziz. So he stops Trick from interfering, but there is still a chair in the ring. The match just continues. And then Carmelo hits his finish, the slicing leg drop, and pins him. So even though Carmelo tried to cheat and was foiled over and over and over again, he out-wrestled Apollo and defeated him in two straight falls. Now, I do see where this is going. Yes. Because clearly Carmelo is going to be challenging Braun for many weeks. Yes. And they had to put him over as strong as possible. So, mission accomplished. He swept Apollo Crews here. And, and like I say, the actual wrestling that he did was, was tremendous. He looked great doing it. Uh, it did take away the drama from this particular event. Right. It took away the drama? Yeah. Yeah. What do you mean? I mean, there was... Th- there was Two straight falls. A, a dominant win is not as dramatic as a back and forth. Well, no, but I was, I was stunned. I was stunned when he won in two straight falls. Right. And, yeah. then, and then later I figured it out. And, you know, once I saw him come out after the main event, it was like, well, if, uh, he should have won in two straight falls. He's the guy who's challenging Braun Breaker. And, you know, I think there's a decent chance. Well, I don't want to say too much, but I think that he could beat Braun sure. Breaker. Yeah. And uh, I also think he may not beat Braun Breaker, but I think that uh, one way or the other, uh, one of these guys is uh, is probably ending up being fast tracked after that particular match. I don't know that for sure, but that would be my guess. You're either going to be the champion, or you're going to the main roster. I don't know for sure. I've been told they're going to do that, 
But that's kind of what I'm thinking. And, man, if you're challenging Braun Breaker, dude, you should be beating Apollo Crews in two straight falls. Not to mention Apollo and Dabakato, Apollo and Commander Aziz. There's a natural feud. That's a much better name. They were together. Yeah, but Commander Aziz sucked. So I'm happy he's back as Dabakato. <laughs> So, uh, you know, they can feud and, and do whatever they're going to do, yeah. and uh, and that's fine. Apollo's job down there is to get guys over, and he got this guy over in two straight falls. I did not see two straight falls coming at all. No, but nobody did. But it made sense later. So Trick goes and takes the, uh, the turnbuckle down. He goes and alerts Carmelo that, uh, hey, it's off. Everybody knows. So he and Carmel ends up going into the turnbuckle and and at this point they kind of pull back on the camera and Trick is over and he has opened up his chair and he has knelt down and he's praying. He's got his hands folded like this and he's praying, hoping that the Lord above will save his man. I laughed and I laughed and I this laughed. Trick Williams. I, I love Trick. I don't know if this guy needs to wrestle a lot. You know, they yeah. they sign people. They sign people, and obviously, what they want is for them all to fucking wrestle. It doesn't matter if it's like you know whoever. Some people listen. You know this this company grossed a billion dollars for the second straight year, over a billion dollars. Okay. You got enough money to pay fucking Trick Williams to just be a manager. He does not need to wrestle. If he ends up being a great wrestler, fine. But you know what? If I'm calling Trick Williams or if I'm calling Carmelo up to the main roster, Trick is going with him. It's part of the act. They're great together. He's he's valuable for his promos and the stuff that he does outside the ring. He can do a match every now and then when the manager has to get his ass kicked or whatever. But not everybody needs to be a wrestler. You know, they've cut so many guys over the years because, oh, you know, this person can't headline WrestleMania. Motherfucker, how many people are going to headline WrestleMania? This rule that if you're not capable of headlining WrestleMania, you don't belong here, that's a load of horseshit, okay? You need people that can headline WrestleMania. You need people that can be on the WrestleMania card. You need people that can be in the WrestleMania Battle Royal. You need people that can manage at WrestleMania. You need people that can talk at WrestleMania. And there's a lot of really talented people that could have added a lot to this promotion that because somebody decided they couldn't fucking headline WrestleMania, they got fired. It's stupid. And these guys are great, by the way. Apollo Crews and Carmelo Hayes, awesome. Yes. Yes. They were awesome in this match. Here is some actual commentary from Bastion Burger. I love barbecue. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> During this match, uh, I believe uh, Bastion was uh, choking on his chicken wings. Bastion said, uh, Vince, you haven't lived up to your contract. I uh, require four or five pizzas delivered in a wheelbarrow. It was at this point that Bastion Burger demanded hot dogs. Were they delivered in a wheelbarrow, too? Yeah. That's a big hot dog. We we're told Razor and Zanetti have called. It's a big wiener. <laughs> yes, Brian. Big, juicy wiener. Yes, in between two buns. <laughs> oh, you broke Vinny. <laughs> if you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.